more than Dreamyaks. I have been cooking up a high fiber, lower calorie, very filling breakfast and recovery bowl for the last few weeks and really seems to be helping some of the gut problems that I've got. And if you've seen on Instagram, I seem to be trimming up a little bit. So what I've been having first thing in the morning is a few scoops, like three and a half tablespoons of chia seeds, and then a little bit of cinnamon. Cinnamon ends up keeping the blood sugar low. Then scoop of whey protein for some flavor, a little bit of athletic greens to get the greens in in the morning, just a serving of greens. Um, and some flavor, and then a little bit of sun butter. I also, for some thickness, I put in some coconut milk, and that is really, really good for the stomach because it fills you up, the chia seeds expand a little bit, and it's good fiber. Now, after the workout, what I do is, well, what I've been doing is you can and I have just started a partnership. I'll tell you more about that another time. But I have the Energy Plus Protein Shake. Uh, so it's super easy to digest right after a workout. But then an hour, hour and a half later, what I'll have is cooked and cooled oats. About a half a cup of that. I'll have some almond butter because you don't want to have the same butter over and over and over. You can develop uh, problems with that. A different type of whey protein again just to mix it up I will still put in some coconut mix mix for some thickness and a little bit of cinnamon for the blood sugar response what I'm trying to do is as I mentioned in a video a couple weeks ago a wanting to eat early like as soon as I start becoming active I'm eating in the morning so that I'm not giving my body a starvation response to slow down the metabolism. I am also creating meals here that are very nutrient dense, but not super calorie dense. However, because they have so much fiber in them, A, they're really, really filling, and it's a specific kind of fiber that the good bacteria in your stomach end up liking and thriving on. And what uh, the thought is, is that if you have a certain type of gut dysbiosis, if that is the type of gut dysbiosis that you have, this will make it feel better. With some people, because it's so much fiber, it'll make you feel worse. I don't know if you've seen the video that we put out, last video that we put out, where I raced Greg Doucette, pro bodybuilder, and if you watch that video, he is suffering so much more than I am all the way through. Now, you might be saying like, well, hey, you know, that's a good thing, Tarrant. Well, is it? Is it really? I think back to Half Ironman Puerto Rico where my goal was to qualify for the Half Ironman World Championships. And with two kilometers to go, I had a lead and somebody came up and ran me down who I knew was in my age group and I had no answer. And my brain just said to my body like, you know what, nope, nope, we're not working hard, we're suffering enough. And that was like kind of the first inkling of, yeah, maybe I can, I can suffer a little bit, but I don't think I can suffer a lot. I don't think I can do Lionel Sanders level suffering. I don't think many people can do Lionel Sanders level suffering. But when I saw that video of me racing Greg and he was just gassed at the end of it. And I was like, oh, oh okay, that was hard. And I even remember when the sprint started, I'm like, nope, just gave up like that. That I wonder if I can HTFU a little bit. So we're gonna try something today that I just explained to NTK and she said, well, I think you're being ridiculous and then left. So let's try. Okay, so back in the days of the Spartans, like 300, like super jack warriors, they did a lot of their training, not physically, like yeah, they did physical training, but a big chunk of what they did was mental training. One of the things that they did was they would fill up a mouthful of water, go for long runs, have to come back, and then spit that water out. It was like just all building mental toughness, not super, super hard runs, just building mental toughness. So. I have a 30 minute run and just for shoots, like 
see if I can do it. I am going to take a swig of water here and see if I can do a full 30 minute run, come back and spit it there. I think this is gonna be way harder than I think. I think this is ridiculous. You're ridiculous. So you can see here, and I'm just gonna narrate you through it and fast forward through any of the parts that uh, I don't really have anything to say, but this here is about 300 meters from my house and you can see that I'm shaking my head there. And within like the first 20 steps, everything in my brain started screaming to me, no, don't do this. You took on way too much water. There's no way that people ever ran with this much water in their mouth. You screwed up, stop the tape. Nobody will ever know if you just stop recording and then you take a smaller sip of water and then start again because you screwed up. This is the first time you did this, like on and on and on. Just excuses started piling up in my brain that they started screaming to me and making all of these negotiations about how and why I could take myself out of that uncomfortable situation. And I think that's a lot of what people go through in a race. I know that it's a lot of what I ended up going through during Puerto Rico. So just had to stop here briefly to actually say something to NTK, but then realized that I couldn't say anything any way besides just typing it. And I had to make sure the camera was going the right way. And uh, you know how you get a little bit grumpy when you're in a little bit of pain? like. Yeah, well, maybe not the best time to have your spouse around. Um, fortunately, we have come to an understanding that Kim just says that I am a grump and I accept that I am also a grump. I was just saying to her, like, just keep the camera going the entire time. And uh, that was not a very flattering look on my face. <laughs> camera hiccup at the start but we're good to go now and uh, as I said to Taryn before we started I really don't understand the point of this but he's doing it I feel it doesn't seem comfortable there isn't really a big point of this to be honest I'm not suggesting that all of you have to go out and start doing this I think that there is definitely some merit to doing things that are a little bit more challenging and putting yourself in an awkward position to get over it. And this is definitely an awkward position. Why I'm stopping here is because my brain just started freaking out. The longer that I would go on, it would just build up and build up and build up and I would stop. Not really to do anything besides just let all the voices in my head telling me to stop to calm down. And I think going through this more times, it helps make those voices be a little bit quieter. There was once a time in a swim workout where we had, uh, I think it was a time trial schedule and it was a 400 meter time trial. It was the, one of the hardest time trials out there. And the coach at the beginning of the workout, he said, you know what, everyone's kind of sick today. The schedule isn't working out. We're not gonna do the time trial. So we do our swim and we think we all got off scot-free. And then right at the very end of the workout, when we figured that everything was basically done, he said, all right, 30 seconds, we're doing the time trial. And everyone just lost their mind. Like, oh my God, oh my God, what's gonna happen? What are, are, how, you can't do this, we can't do this. Well, everyone ended up getting over their, their shirt and 30 seconds into it, started a time trial. And afterwards he said, you know what, sometimes your race isn't going to go exactly according to plan. You're not gonna have the perfect scenario to prepare for something exactly as you wanna prepare for something. And it's important to understand that yeah, you can get over these things and you don't have to have the perfect scenario to actually perform well. And every single one of us put out a 400 meter time trial that was basically just on par with what we have done otherwise. But I think going through more of those repetitions of actually putting yourself in an uncomfortable situation, while it doesn't add a whole lot to the training, I think it does add something to your mental well being. Good morning. Pretty sure that that individual was not too impressed with me walking around with cheeks full of water. I actually did a little bit of research before this. 
I, I didn't just read an article and say, all right, hey, the Spartans did it, so I'm going to do it. There's not a lot of things that I do like that, that where I just take some article and apply some bro science and go, all right, well, now that's fact. That's what I got to do. No, I actually went and started researching on ncbi.com. That's where I look up most of of where I start looking at studies to formulate opinions on things. And one of the reasons that I decided to actually start looking into mental toughness is because I realized over this past year that one of the biggest things that has caused a lot of weight gain and a lot of difficulty for people is the feeling of not being in control, of being tremendously stressed out. And what I started looking at is, are aspects of just being more mentally tough something that can make your ability to handle even day-to-day situations easier. And there were actually some studies that I found that said people that had gone through uh, BUDS training or people that had gone through intense physical athletic training that was designed in such a way to mentally toughen up the individuals, in both those cases, in day-to-day stressful situations, they actually had a lower stress response with cortisol and a higher ability to act quickly. So they were ability to they were able to ramp up quicker because they didn't fear that ramp up and then they were able to bring themselves down a lot quicker. And that's what we're all looking for. We're looking for the ability to yeah, get ourselves jacked up when a workout requires us to be jacked up but then not have that carry on throughout the day. The sooner we can bring down our cortisol response and bring down our nervous system, the better we're gonna be, the more relaxed we're gonna be, the quicker we're going to be able to start recovering. So right now we're somewhere around uh, 13 minutes into this and you can see that I got into a groove and again, I just needed to calm down everything in my brain. Started saying, nope, you're freaking out. You're gonna choke on this. All right, everything's fine though. Once I was able to just center myself, which is a lot harder to do when you're running because you're also focusing on turning over your feet, you're focused on breathing, focused on your heart rate, focused on your arm carry. So it takes, in my opinion, this is what I'm guessing, it takes some of that mental strength that you can put towards uh, battling, I get battling your demons, battling the challenge away because you're focused on the other things. So it became almost overwhelming to do both. And I think that's why it's so hard to be mentally that much tougher and dig deeper than people who are already really, really good athletes that you might be going up against or even yourself because you're already putting that mental energy towards the act of being active. We did a podcast uh, uh, earlier this year with James Nestor who wrote a book about nasal breathing and how it's so much better for you and that if you breathe nasally your heart rate will actually be lower but uh, we'll have to inquire ask Taryn after if uh, he's felt that his heart rate is lower with a mouthful of water. Yeah, nasal breathing is something that I've looked into and I look at it as like the icing on the cake. Uh, Yeah, that book is is great and espouses the benefits of nasal breathing, but I definitely don't look at it as like a 95 sort of thing. I talk a lot about how there's 5% of things that generate 95% of your results and it's getting enough sleep, it's having good nutrition, It is having a training plan that has enough low intensity work and then that allows you to do enough high intensity work to actually get faster. And the nasal breathing I look at more as like the 95% of the things that you hear about like beet juice and Normatec boots and nasal breathing. All of these things that are just on and on and on that you hear about 
that really only re result in about the final 5%, if that, of things that could potentially make you faster. So yeah, I do believe that nasal breathing, breathing is a good thing. Do I think that people should stress out about it or as has happened to me, get nasty at other people in comment sections for not nasal breathing? No, I think it's an added benefit. Uh, wonder. He wants to puke or spit it out? Probably both. While the answer in TK was uh, spit it out, <laughs> what was happening here was still, like it didn't stop. It's not like I figured this out right away. My body, my face, my shoulders, everything were start was starting to just, it was like I was convulsing. It was saying, all right, well, you're not going to stop yourself and you're not going to take us out of this weird situation, this painful situation yourself. So we're going to start spitting out the water on your behalf. It, it was like this, I don't know who the they is, but, and the we is, because it's all just me, but it's like different parts of my brain that are, that are saying like on the one shoulder, there's the brain that is super, super cautious. That's trying to hold you back and protect you from danger and fearful responses. But on the other shoulder is what should actually be you. That's saying, shut up brain, we can do this. We're not even close to done. This is easy stuff, but we have to get over it. And they're in this constant argument against each other. I think that if you do things like this and you do hard workouts more often, it's gonna transfer over into everyday life where you still have those two different individuals and versions of you on your shoulder and all of a sudden the whiny one gets a little bit quieter because realizes that he or she is never gonna win and the more daring one gets a little bit more powerful. Now they're always going to be there. In my experience, they're always gonna be there. You just get faster and you level up and the risks that you're willing to take on in life, in business, with your health, whatever it is, they just become larger. And you've still got those two voices on your shoulder, but the one that is productive, the one that is daring, the one that is ready to take on challenges, ends up having a stronger voice. And it allows you to level up and do those other things that when you're first starting out, you aren't feeling like you're prepared to do. Now you can hear a lot me going, oh, oh, oh. so it's like I'm freaking out and it just, it never stopped. It's those voices were always there. It just, I hope would be easier next time. Or maybe the next time I have a challenge like this that is mentally more grueling that it might be a little bit easier. Struggling. I don't know what that was coming from, actually. I think I was getting more mentally tired than anything. All of that wheezing, I don't know what was happening there. I, I don't know why I scream during hard workouts. Maybe it's like a release to let that tension between who's on the right shoulder and who's on the left shoulder out. But it, it seemed like that, that, mm, that wheezing was almost soothing. Same old gentleman as before. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. He is getting tired. He's got a little ways to go yet.
stopped at the very final road right before <laughs> about 300 meters before getting to the house and I wanted to make it right to that same spot that I started from and all of a sudden traffic decided to be a total jerk and I was stuck here for a couple of minutes and it was like even though I was stopped again still very hard and not something that I really enjoyed doing but I wanted to complete it and I set the challenge to do something so I was gonna do it regardless of how silly it was so NTK went away to get the finish line to document this ridiculous thing and about 300 meters later and we will be done <laughs> exactly what you'd think. It's stupid to do, <laughs> but it just turns a 30 minute run into like 30 minute harden the F up kind of workout. I'm not sad at myself for doing it. How much does your face hurt? It's not bad. Oh, I thought that would be the worst. Was the breathing the worst? No, like everything in my brain is like, stop this, stop this, stop this. So it is a wow. mental toughness exercise after 100%. all. 100%. Huh. Congratulations. Plus, plus a pretty contest. Who can be the prettiest? I don't know, it didn't look gross. I think I won. Oh, okay, so just to set things straight, this is not me saying, all right, everyone needs to go out and run with mouth full of water. If you wanna do it and challenge yourself, by all means, do it. Don't think that it's gonna be this magical elixir of making you a better athlete, but I don't think it's an awful thing to do things that aren't, overly stressful over and over and over on the body I mean there's nothing physically stressful about that but to add a little something to make it a little more mentally challenging to be tougher I don't think that's a terrible thing and what do you have to say you gonna do it now Ooh, you gotta be kidding me. Ha. All right, Trainiacs, if you aren't already subscribed and you love seeing people do ridiculous things that who knows if they help you but uh, Hey, if things were easy, would it really interest us? Would you be watching this if we like doing easy things? Probably not. Hit the subscribe button below. Later, Trainiacs.